Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis and today I'm going to be working in the garden getting a lot of our vegetable crops in. This is our first real year here at the new homestead site. The garden soil, it's first year soil so, you know, that's not always going to be the best. I do a lot of organic gardening, I do a lot of composting. So for me, my soil gets better and better over time. With a lot of conventional gardening techniques, uh, their soil gets uh, destroyed and depleted year over year. But if you're doing organic gardening, it just gets better every year that you're here. So this year, first year, it's not going to be our best year ever. Um, but I've put in a lot of amendments into the soil. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I also want to talk about our uh, orchard is starting to come in. We have about 30 fruit trees. This is a peach tree right here. We have peach, pear, apple, plums, all sorts of different peach trees. That was a really early ad because I, I really love doing gardening with orchards because well, as you, if you've ever done gardening yourself, you know, tomatoes, potatoes, that kind of stuff, it's really labor intensive. You gotta put the stuff in, you gotta harvest it. There's a few other steps in there as well, but there are steps that you have to do. With uh, planting an orchard, you plant it, and as long as it gets enough rainwater and the soil it, that it's planted in is good, that's kind of it. It's like plant it and then later on pick some food off of it. So I really love the idea of orchards and I put in a bunch of them at the beginning and every year we're gonna be adding to that. So let's go over to the garden here and I'll show you kind of what we've got going on. Uh, this is our garden section. I would tell you the number of square feet that it is, except that I don't know, I don't care. It just looks pretty big and I think I can fit a lot of stuff in it. I don't get too caught up in the numbers because the numbers don't feed you, the food does. Uh, what I've done in terms of getting the soil uh, you know, as ready as I can for this first year is uh, when the site work people came in, I asked them to get me uh, like kind of a garden topsoil. Uh, if you're just bringing in like clean fill, that's going to be, who the hell knows what that's going to be. Our clean fill was a mix of sand and silt. Uh, Amber's operating camera right now. I'm going to give her permission. If you want to walk around, Amber, uh, you can walk around. We have a lot of black flies right here, and if you stand still for any amount of time, the black flies are going to get in your face. So Amber's going to keep the camera moving. That'll make it more dynamic for you, and she's going to keep all of her blood. Uh, so when I asked the uh, site work people to get me some uh, garden soil, I was saying that because I know that a lot of the clean fill that comes in, it's, it's essentially garbage. It'll be silty, it'll be clay, it'll be just a bunch of sand. We had kind of a mix of sand and silt. It was uh, the stuff that they used to wash off all the, uh, well, rocks like this. You can buy stones like this kind of thing from a, uh, a gravel yard and they want to clean those things off. They wash the silt off of the rocks and they mix that up with sand and they sell it as clean fill. That's what most of our clean fill was, but I wanted to start a little bit better with our garden, so I asked them to get me some kind of a topsoil, garden soil kind of material. And it looks like they got me something pretty good because last year when I was watching the weeds grow up here, you can see what we have for weeds here. It's, uh, you know, not really that much. We had a, a bunch of uh, straw we threw down here. We threw some kind of a grass seeding in here. And then there were just these wild things that came in. Uh, I forget the name of this one. It's edible though. Uh, these are uh, clover over here. This is mugwort, uh, which I'm not super crazy about personally yet, but I want to get crazy about it because there are a lot of uses of mugwort. We're going to talk about that later on our channel. Uh, but all of this kind of area, as you can tell, this is the, um, the second year that it's been growing and it doesn't look particularly awesome. I mean, there's a lot of just dead, dry grass. It's going to get better year after year, especially when the clover really spreads. The clover is going to add nitrogen to the soil and it'll just kind of get it covered up, get some roots in there. But if you compare that to photographs that I was taking of the weeds that were growing in the topsoil they brought in, much, much better. You could see this stuff kind of grew up straggly to this height. This stuff was like all up through here and it was really nice and thick. So it was starting off pretty good. On top of that, I added a bunch of uh, composted material. I bought eight cubic yards of composted uh, stuff. And I think I got some pretty good stuff. You gotta be careful when you buy compost. You don't really know what you're getting. Sometimes it's just municipal waste. <laughs> they get poop. Sometimes it's human poop. that gets kind of um, you know mixed up and resold. This stuff um, seems like it was pretty good. And my clue for that is, uh, you know, you can't judge it by the color. People will say, oh, that, that compost looks so dark, it must be good. People sometimes put like, you know, colorants to darken it up and stuff like that. Uh, what was my clue that this was good stuff is I found an, a real restaurant butter knife in there. So uh, that, that tells me that the uh, stuff that was being composted, a lot of it was real food, you know, waste from places. And that's, that's a good thing. On top of that, I added uh, five cubic yards of uh, peat moss that comes in big uh, kind of rectangular prism uh, bags. I got five cubic, uh, five and a half cubic yards mixed in there. And then I went and I got a bunch of vermiculite. That is this little white stuff. You'll oftentimes see that in potting soil. Uh, the nice thing about vermiculite, which is puffed 
mica. It's kind of like, it's like popcorn, except instead of making it out of corn, they make it out of mica. Uh, it uh, acts like a bunch of little sponges. So I, I put a bunch of that in there and all that together, I think that's gonna be a pretty good first year. So for the garden, what I've got in here so far, and you can see I'm making little paths with scrap wood here. The reason I have the scrap wood uh, pieces in here is whenever you're walking across, uh, you're compacting the soil and compacted soil isn't the best soil for roots. Uh, when you uh, want your plants to be able to grow their roots down under the ground, you want the the soil to be nice and light and fluffy. That's why we put in the uh, uh, the peat moss in here. That's why we put the compost in here. The, uh, the compost also has nutrients in it. But a lot of your soil amendments are to fluff up the soil. And if you fluff up uh, if you fluff up the soil and then you're stomping and walking all around your uh, your plants, uh, you know you're going to be counteracting a lot of that fluffing up. So oh, I already turned this into a porn video, didn't I? What? thing about fluffing. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, I've got these boards here. So as I walk across, ideally it would be stepping stones in, uh, or like a continuous board, but I don't have like one giant continuous board that I want to waste doing this kind of stuff. So I put down these little scrap pieces, but these are going to act kind of like snowshoes to distribute out my weight, uh, distribute out my weight and make it so that as I'm walking across here, A, I'm only compacting one certain area, so I'm not kind of meandering and compacting all over the place because I'm going to focus on the boards and also it's going to spread out my weight so I won't be compacting quite as much. Uh, what I have in here already uh, along the back is uh, some pole beans. These are German pole beans that are going to be growing back there. They all gonna, they're going to grow about to the uh, height of these sticks that you see sticking up out of the ground here. The sticks are there to give them uh, some kind of a uh, structure to grow off of. Uh, if they don't have anything to grow off of, they're going to just be all be like kind of furled across the ground there and a lot of the stuff's going to rot. This will get them up, it'll get more sun into the leaves, and it'll you know, get them up off the ground so animals won't get at them as much and uh, they're, they're not going to have as, uh, as big a tendency to rot. If you want to do something like this, because it's beautiful, isn't it? A bunch of sticks sticking out of the ground with like some blue landscape twine in it. I mean, who wouldn't want that? But if you want to do something like this, what you have to do is stick the sticks in right when you plant your beans. I uh, dug my trench, planted my beans, put a little more soil on top, and then I immediately stuck these sticks in. The reason for that is if you have the plants start growing and then you realize, oh, these need something to climb up and you start sticking sticks in, you're gonna be sticking the sticks in through their roots and you're gonna damage the plant. So you wanna put the sticks in as soon as you do the plant. Uh, the next row over here, we have some pumpkins. These are sugar pumpkins. One, two, three, four, uh, five. But then this count was six. Six sugar pumpkins. Sugar pumpkin, uh, pumpkins uh, and pumpkins in general are a really great kind of survival food. Uh, they last really deep into the winter. Even if you don't have anything special like a root cellar or anything like that, you can take pumpkins, uh, pumpkins and as long as they're in kind of a, like a cool, dry uh, place, uh, pumpkins last deep, deep into the winter, you know, provided that the, the outer skin hasn't been, you know, bumped or scratched or anything like that. Pumpkins last for a long time and they're very nutritious. So we've got a bunch of uh, pumpkins in here. If anything, I've packed in too many. That's a, a common problem with gardeners is they want to pack too much into too small space. I'll be honest, I've got that problem all the time. So six across this row might be a little bit pushing it. If you're doing your own and you want to do less, that's probably better. But I, I make the same mistake every year and I'm glad to bring you in along on my journey of remaking the same mistakes over and over. Uh, the next row we have here is our um, tomatoes, uh, and I'm not going to bother counting because I miscounted last time. Uh, uh, the tomatoes on this side are all like large tomatoes, and the tomatoes down on the end are cherry tomatoes, small ones for picking. I put those down on the end over there so River or anyone that wants to just snack off of them, they don't have to walk into the middle of the garden to get them, they're already on the edge for them. Yeah, and you'll notice that this uh, service walkway uh, works for both the pumpkins and it works for the tomatoes. I try to minimize how many of these I have because every time you're walking in, you're compacting soil. And also I'm using uh, garden real estate for walkways. So I want to be able to work from one side. I want to work from the other side. And the beans I can obviously service from the outside of the garden. The next uh, section that I'm working on right here, and I'm not going to go through everything that we're putting in today, uh, but the next section is going to be some of the Burning Hearth Homestead stuff. If you've been watching our series, Burning Hearth Homestead generously is that anything interesting to look at? We're always having military aircraft fly up over here. I think it's because I host a prepping show and there's some sort of a conspiracy against me. I, I don't think that it's just a <laughs> random coincidence that they happen to be flying over. What is it? It's a, it's a, it's a military helicopter. I didn't see it. Oh, there yeah, it is. There we yeah, we have those come through all the time. Those in fighter jets and those, those four prop uh, transport airplanes are always going over. Again, certainly a conspiracy against me because I run a prepping channel. Um, <laughs> So uh, 
the series that we were doing on uh, gardening, I apologize for not doing more of it, uh, we were generously provided with a bunch of seeds, and these, these are all the seeds from Burning Hearth Homestead. Uh, tomatoes, and uh, there were Brussels sprouts, cucumbers, there's some lettuce through here, carrots, um, borage, which I'm interested in because that's kind of a neat old world plant, some parsnips. Um, what do we have across the front here? Well, this is a good opportunity to mention this. If you remember the series, I documented what everything is in here. So this thing over here is eggplant. Uh, along this end. And you can, see, you can see this and the tomatoes have a little bit of a, a similar look between their leaf structure. That's because they're both nightshade. Peppers uh, also look very similar to these. Like th this would be very difficult for me to distinguish this from like a red or a green pepper. So I'm going to be taking these and I'm going to be sticking them over in this section of the garden. And that, this is what I really want to talk about in this video, in addition to everything else that I already blabbed on about, is the idea of arranging your garden. Because it's pretty important. Uh, if you look at the way that I have things here, we have uh, these beans, these climbing pole beans, which I mentioned get pretty tall because they go off the sticks. We've got them all the way in the back of the garden. This is the back, this is south, that's the, no it's not, this is north. <laughs> this is north over here. <laughs> this is south where the sun comes from, at least here in the northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere, you gotta switch it all around and what I said earlier actually would have been correct as opposed to incorrect. But this is the back of the garden on the north side and these are gonna be very tall. They're gonna cast a shadow on this ground over here. Now I don't care, there's just some grass over here. Who cares about that? but I want to have the tall stuff in the back. The next thing I have over here are these uh, pumpkins. The pumpkins are going to be pretty low and uh, they're not going to be casting much, if any, shadow onto the beans. The pumpkins will get to be maybe about that tall with their leaves, uh, but the beans are going to be towering up over those and we don't really have to worry about the shadow that they cause down at the bottom. Then I have my walkway and then we have tomato plants. Now tomato plants can climb across the ground or you can put them up on vines. I am going to be adding a little trellis later on uh, so that I can have the tomatoes up. Uh, they're probably going to be maybe somewhere around around this high and they're going to cast a shadow across where I'm walking, not over some other plants. So you want to think about that when you're planning out your garden. You want to have uh, tall things uh, positioned in a way where just to the north of them you don't have some kind of a short plant that's going to get shaded. The next plant that I'm going to be putting in over here is, I don't honestly know. I think uh, we've got this, uh, this little chart over here. Uh, I have a, a couple different options. I think Brussels sprouts, which grow about yay high, could go in there. Brussels sprouts aren't really big and bushy and leafy. So even though the Brussels sprouts are going to be kind of on the high side, the tallest part of the Brussels sprout isn't going to be super leafy, so it won't be casting a, a big shadow over there. Whatever I decide to do, it's important when you're laying out your garden to just think about the different heights of things. If you don't know them, look them up, look at a picture or something, and just picture the way that it's going to be casting a shadow. And the last thing you want to do is have something big and tall on the south side, something short and squat on the, other, on the north side, and it gets just completely shadowed by the other thing. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope your garden is going well this year. I'm going to be, keep sharing what's going on in our garden. Again, this is our first year it, uh, with, organ, uh, with organic gardening. Things get better and better year after year. Uh, but for this first year, I think we've got a pretty good shot at having a pretty good harvest. And I hope your garden turns out well as well. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.